good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Uri in Palau. I have it zoomed in a bit so that you can get a better view of this little southerly corner of the big island of Bubble Dop in Palau. Now I've learned if you saw my last video about Palau, which was about this area over here, I'm not talking about that tonight. I talked a lot about the Palauan language and how it's really something. It has a lot of silent letters and um, a lot of, how do I say this? Um, letters that make one sound in English but a different sound in another. For example, like you can see here, uh, Bubble Dub is how we say it in English. In Palawan, it is Bubble Dub. Bubble Dub. Because the D makes like a TH kind of sound. Lots of like guttural stops and things. It's really interesting language, but it's one of those that like you think you know how to pronounce something, and then when you find out, you're like, oh boy, I was super wrong. So. If anyone wants to correct any pronunciation, feel free to do so. But I am like 90% sure that this part of Palau is pronounced Irai. It looks a lot like Irai in English, but in Palauan, I am pretty sure it's pronounced Irai, which is really neat. This little corner is known as the Stepping Stone of Palau. Now, why is that? I think I'm going to blend a lot of history into the geography because that's kind of how plot works. A lot of things are intertwined. That's just how things are there. So, there is the kind of northern island culture up here and in the uh, northern archipelago up here. And then there's the southern culture down here. And even in like pre-contact times, prehistory times that we know of, these were two kind of different cultures, like, you know, same people, same customs, but different values. And there are a lot of clashes over territory, so whenever something needed to be resolved, it would happen right here. Whenever you needed to get to one place or the other, you had to pass through Iraq. Right. And that is true still today, of course. Um, for one, the international airport is located here. So, whenever you're flying to Palau, you're going to wind up here and right. There is also a big bridge linking the big main island to Kolor. Kolor is the largest kind of metropolitan area of Palau. It's kind of the more city. You know, this is like the country. This is the city, right? And so it's a link between those two different, more traditional cultural farming, big city industry kind of thing. The bridge linking them is considered a Japanese Palau and Friendship Bridge. Um, let's see. Let me throw in some history. The Germans owned Palau during World War I. Uh, the Japanese went and invaded as many German territories in the Pacific as they could because they were part of the Allies with the Great Britain and then eventually the United States, so on and so forth. So they wanted to um, get the Germans out. So they took over and were given the lands after World War I. So they built a lot of infrastructure, mainly down here in Kolor, but um, they started to build this bridge and it never got finished. World War II happened. Um, more important things needed to be done for the Japanese at the time. So um, the Palauans wound up finishing the bridge, so it was like a joint effort. So it's now considered the Japanese Palauan Friendship. Um, the most important cultural place in Irai is the local Bai, which 
probably showing you the sun Google Earth, but I'll do it in a minute. The Bai is the meeting house that's part of every village and every territory. It is painted with all kinds of symbols and stories and legends all over, and it was for men only. It's a very matriarchal society, but there's a lot of like men only, like male chief only things in Borough. Um, and that's one of them. It is the oldest by in Palau. It's about 200 years old. And what's interesting about the construction is that, you know, they're made out of wood and fronds and rock. And they're built in a way in that they can be quickly taken down. Apparently they took down this by during World War II so that nothing would be damaged. And when the conflict was over, they just put all the pieces back together like Legos. I think that's really neat. See what else you're looking at for you. Oh, there are stone quarries here on some of the islands off of Irai that were used by the people of the Yap Islands. You can actually, can you see those? No, it's just that camera. The Yap, <laughs> the Yap Islands right here. Okay, the Yap Islands are part of Micronesia, but they're the nearest islands of Micronesia to Palau. The people of the Yap Islands had a currency known as um, either rye stones or ray stones. I have heard both pronunciations. I still don't know which one is correct. It could be both. Um, these were huge stone circles with little holes in the middle, kind of like Fred Flintstone wheels. <laughs> he didn't have wheels on his car. Like, kind of like if you picture like a caveman wheel, that's what they were. Um, these stones were very heavy and very, very valuable. And on the Yap Islands, there are no stone quarries. So they would very treacherously sail across the seas to Palau to mine the stone needed to make the rye stones and then have to sail with them back. It was very, very dangerous. These stones were extremely heavy. I mean, put them in your boat, your boat sinks kind of heavy, so it was a very treacherous thing to do. A lot of Yappies people stayed on the islands and, you know, had families there. So, that's pretty interesting. What else do I have? Irai is from, the name Irai, I mean, the name Irai comes from a type of flounder that can be found in the waters here. If you don't know what a flounder looks like, they are flatfish. <laughs> kind of hard to show you with a tip. They are flatfish with little eyes on top of their heads. They swim like this. The local god of the area, whose name I didn't write down because I knew I would never be able to pronounce it in a million years, so I'm just not bothering. The local god of the area was looking for some food, looking for some fish to fry up. He caught a big old fish. And he sliced it in half and went to fillet that half. And that was pretty much all he needed. So he thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put the other half of this fish back. But when he did, he realized that that fish would only have one eye. So he just put another eye next to it. And that's how we get the flounder. That's a cool story. They have so many cool stories from this place. Um, they're very, very detailed though. So I'm not going to get into them. That's like the easiest one. I mentioned this when I was covering the other side of the island here about the terraced hills. And I can show you on Google Earth what they look like now because I found them. <laughs> Before I was like, they say there's terraced hills, but I don't see any terraced hills because I was looking for like the hills they have like in the Philippines and stuff where it's like huge hills with huge rice paddies on them. That's not quite what they are like. The terraced hills in this corner of Palau are a mystery. We don't really know why they were constructed. We assume for farmland, but we don't know. Um, I 
think I read that the people here believed they were like a couple thousand years old, but some archaeologists have found evidence that they're about 4,000 years old. Which, like, that's like pyramid times, right? Those are pretty old. And just very interesting that the people have so many stories and legends and histories and that, but for these terraces, they've got nothing. They have some stories about the gods living on these terraces, so you shouldn't go poking around there too much, you know? Could lead to some disasters, but the main theory is that the very ancient peoples that would have settled here, um, you know, probably used them either as some kind of fortress or for farming and for whatever reason abandoned the area. Um, I read that the main reason was probably a lack of fresh water, but we'll never know. So they're just kind of there and they are a big point of pride for the people there. Um, the last note that I have in my notes to tell you is about um, these lines were drawn across the island here because like I said before you kind of had the culture up here and the culture down here and there were quite a few clashes from what I could tell it was never like a full-on war like it never got super violent in like terms of battles but there were many violent disagreements between the peoples here so when Germany took over, it was controlled by Spain. Spain sold it to Germany. When Germany took over, they came over to investigate these islands and realized that there was lots of regional conflict. So they said, you know what we do over in Europe is we draw imaginary lines and, you know, you're in charge of this side of the line and you're in charge of that side of the line. And... Pretty much the, the violence between the peoples didn't stop, but like 99% of the violent clashes pretty much stopped. And um, it became more of like a mutual respect in the cultures here. And I think that's really neat. And Uri was very important in that. I think the Germans recognized that too. In that, um, you know, you had to cross through this area to get to any of the other main areas of Palau. So, very important spot. I think that's why the airport wound up being built there too later. Most likely by the Japanese. They loved building airports back in the 1920s, 1930s, and definitely in the 1940s. They really needed them. Uh, but it makes sense because this is the stepping stone of That's all I wrote in my notes. I could have written a lot more. I found so much information about this place. It seems like a very little special spot and very little country. So let me zoom this out. It's gonna be a little weird. And let me pull up my Google Earth. So I could show you some of these things in more detail. So here's Irai. Let me zoom it out so you can see exactly where Palau is. I always remember that you know, it used to be Spanish, and the Spanish owned the Philippines. So if you never need to find Palau on a map, you look for the Philippines. You look for these big trenches here, and it's on the, the big mountain, undersea mountain range, the seamount, nearest to the Philippines. Palau's right there on top. So now you always know where it is. Just look for the Philippines, and look for the mountains, and you'll find Palau. Let's see, first let me show you those terraces before I forget, because remember we were over here, I'm like, I don't see any terraces. Here's what the terraces look like. Let me get this out of the way. Like, here's one. That's like the biggest one. There's another. It's these little marks on the land. Do you remember what we're talking about? I'm weak, and I'm like, where are they? Little terraces here. These are the terraces. Nothing like you'd imagine over in the Philippines, but it's still a, like a big point of pride to the people here because these were built by the ancients. We don't know why, but they're there still. 
pretty neat. You can see the big airport here. Let's check it out. Big International Airport. Make sure you can see it. Okay. I'm at the weird angle again. This airport is so pretty. Very traditional looking, even on the inside. So yes, when you fly into Palau to visit, this is the airport you're going to fly into. It's where you're going to arrive. In Irai. How cool is that? Let's see, let me show you the islands where the quarries were. They were here and over here. This is where the Yapis would sail to mine stone for their currency. Pretty cool. I think that's super cool. And here, of course, is the Bai. Zoom in. You can kind of see the surrounding area. Here's the Bai. So gorgeous. You can see how it's built on kind of like stilts and rocks. The big roof here with so many paintings on it. And I was reading about what all the symbolism is in these paintings. Up here in the rafters, they paint all the stories. So we can easily tell all the stories. It looks like in these photos, they are building a new roof. You can tell that it's made out of like, where is it? There we go. Out of like a palm tree frog maybe from the trunks and things so they're installing a new roof there lots of construction work so uh, okay there's lots of roosters on this but and I've learned that the rooster symbolizes how everyone has to wake up in the morning and get to work that there can be no laziness that um, everyone has to get up and cooperate together. So that's the symbol of the rooster on the buys. Very interesting. Kind of trying to add a sense of community, right? Um, lots of faces on there represent different gods or like ancient chiefs. Looks like it rained while they were constructing. What a surprise. And yeah. That's a cool shot of them installing a new roof. How cool is that? You can see all the roosters painted on there. Telling everyone that we need to cooperate by waking up and not being lazy. Everyone has to work together. And you can see from the waters here that Irai does not have beaches like, like I described before, you know. Um, not bring your towel, bring your surfboard kind of beaches. These are swampy mangrove shores. Uh, you're not going to come out here to get a suntan. You're going to wind up looking muddy in the morning, please. Very interesting. Here is the bridge. You can see that there's a big kind of like port area around it. Thinking to... And I think that's all that I have for you for tonight. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Next in my series, we're going to be going to Nauru, which is very exciting because I love talking about Nauru. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good.